Welcome to Secure Autonomous Systems Umbrella Policy Configuration. In this section, I'm going to show how to edit allowed and block destination lists, edit block page appearances, create a new per user policy, and to test the policy to show what the impact is to corporate traffic once enabled. So in this section, we're going to create a basic policy from within Umbrella. Uh, the policy is what controls what users can access onto the internet. Uh, by default, there is the default policy and that collects every user is assigned to the default policy by default. It's pretty much acts as a catch-all to ensure that all your identity, uh, identities within the organization have a baseline level of protection. Uh, to start off, we're going to dig into the destination lists, or effectively just uh, white and black lists uh, for, your, for your network. These are processed at the beginning before any policies. So if we click on the umbrella login, we're basically back onto our uh, jump box at the moment. We click on policies, all policies. We get an overview of all the policies that are configured. At the moment, we just have a default policy, which is applied to all identities. There's two destination lists in force, block, block and allow. We can create our own and assign them to policies. Uh, we can see we can see that there's it's, it's pretty much a basic out of the box policy assigned. So if we go to policies, policy components, destination lists, we should see a list now of the global allow and the global block, which are effectively just different names for white and, and black lists. Uh, for instance, let's do a quick test. So if we use BBC as, a, as an example, for some reason it's bbc.com. So if we add that to the block list, It's worth knowing that it takes a couple of minutes to uh, go through, approximately two minutes. So if we exit this and then try, we can now see that the site is blocked by umbrella. Now, the allow list is processed before the block list. So technically, if we add it now into the, into the one list, then in two minutes time, time, it should still be allowed access regardless of what the blacklist says. So let's give that a try. So let's give that a try. Let's now, and there we go. We now have access to the BBC website and that is because the allow list is processed before the block list. So it's something to bear in mind to make sure you don't have any issues. Now I'm going to remove remove uh, BBC from the wire list. And I'm going to, and because we're going to now dig deep into the block page appearances, what we can use. So the default settings for the block page is um, every request is treated the same and it will show the block page with the default message which is sorry so and so has been whether bbc.co.uk has been blocked by your network administrator so hopefully that is now that we still have a, a little bit left before we can have a look but all we, we can create a custom
So the out of the box block list, we went to BBC now, this side is blocked with the domain in there. Give it two minutes, I'll pause the video and come back. Now we'll try the custom message. You see now it has not allowed here instead of your network administrator has blocked this. It has been blocked by a network administrator. But you we can use we can use so add a URL at the bottom. Or we can also add that they have to contact an email address. Uh, and we can also sh show a custom logo. In which case we can just select a file and uh, add it in if we want to. We can also block requests. Instead of treating them all the same, we can treat them differently. So per category or destination list. So for instance, for destination list, we can have a block. We can have a custom message, or we can have them redirect to a URL that says, "Click on this URL to request uh, the site added to a whitelist or blacklist." removed from a blacklist. The category we can do we can do the same again. So we have the, the options of putting the default block page, custom message, or redirect to URL, phishing sites, and security settings. We can also allow block users to contact an admin from the block page for all of these. That is that is that's a blanket uh, permit. And we can also add the logo onto all of them. Uh, so so, so that is that's the block page appearance. Just put it back to what it was. Now I'm going to create a custom policy and test uh, the impact it has to the solution and to connectivity to the internet. So first off, we have to go to policies management or policies and create create add. Select our identity which is us, we can find us, there it is. We want to enforce everything, plus we want SSL decryption, we want to enforce safe search, and we want to log everything. Categories we want to block, That's everything. Edit the notes and everything. Applications will stick with moderate for now. Normalizer and we'll do Cyber Ghost VPN for our test. You can see that our, our global allow and our global blocks are there, so BT, BBC will still be blocked and we want to enable file inspection. We we'll keep the default appearance, and then we we'll call this call it test. Make sure that it's all still the same, and that looks good. So let's save this now, and then we can test it. But before we do that, I just want to add a few more Let's add ZAA.com uh, to this just to test that the whitelist still bypasses uh, the categorization well, once we once this has been pushed out. So now I'm going to test some uh, I'm going to test some access. So we'll start off with our BBC because we know it's manually blocked. If we go for a gambling site, we 
can see it's blocked through content filtering, but we did whitelist 888, so that should be allowed. We also had safe search uh, enabled. Now, safe search is a feature which is used predominantly by Google to uh, filter out, automatically filter out uh, hostile content such as pornography. So, for instance, if we was to say go to YouTube, it should. Mind because I'm in Firefox though. There you go. So some results have been removed because restricted mode is enabled by your network administrator, which means that which means that safe search has been enabled. Uh, also, another way we can check that is it's it's also worked. We can do an NS lookup. And as you can see here, force safe search .com is what the name was returned instead of just google.com. So that's how you how you test how do you test safe search? Now I'm going to demonstrate how to use the policy tester to understand more about how the policies work. Uh, policy tester is found policies and in the top right policy tester. So we'll put, put ourselves in as a test. And then we will put our destination as And there you go. It tested it for you just to show you uh, without you having to actually having to test it. Next, we're going to run a report uh, to see the latest browser activities. So this is under reporting activity search. There we go. We can already see it all in here. See all the activity, and you can also see a few drop blocks. 